Hi there, I'm Ken Lammers. Welcome to Minor League Matters. And let's talk about uh, rankings and standings in the Appalachian League. Okay, so we're going to start out first with the East. And Bluefield Blue Jays are up 13-3. to They've won 13. They've uh, lost 3. And they are far and above the number one team in, this, in that conference. Uh, number two would be Princeton which is pretty good because Princeton and Bluefield are right next to each other, like 15-minute drive from park to park, uh, which means that they have a pretty good rivalry going on. And the locals, despite the fact this is a rookie league, take this pretty seriously. And um, Bluefield draws a fair number, fairly decent crowds for, you know, for Appalachian League. Uh, Princeton doesn't always. But if the rivalry is going, I hope and expect that Princeton will be drawing more crowds and more power to them because I, I do like the Princeton Stadium and everything. So hopefully that will play out. Three, number third, the third in the east is Danville. They're down uh, four. Uh, Pulaski's down six. And finally, Burlington in North Carolina, the lone team in the Appalachian League that's in North Carolina, uh, is down ten and a half. I hope that's not affecting their attendance too much because I really like Burlington. It's one of my favorite places to go in the Appalachian League, particularly in the eastern portion of the Appalachian League. People that really enjoy going there, they put on a really good show, and it's just a fun place to be. So let's move on to the west. In the west, Kingsport's on top. Uh, Kingsport has a 9-6 and six record, which will tell you that the West is a little bit more competitive. Uh, so Elizabethan is down one game from them. Um, I would like to see Elizabethan do really well this year. I figure it's probably their last year in the league, or their last year at least as a Twins affiliate in the league, considering the games that the city of Elizabethan has played with, uh, with the Twins. It's a shame. I mean, they are, what, the oldest or at least the second oldest affiliation in the uh, in all of baseball, uh, them and Billings out in Montana for the Reds, I think, are about the same period of time, something like 17, 18 years. So it's really a shame if they go, but I can't really blame the Twins at this point because, like I said, the city's played games with them. Here we'll give you this money. Well, no, right before the season, we'll take it away again. I wouldn't be happy with that. Bristol, the Pirates, are down a game and a half. Uh, they played pretty well. I've seen that, seen them when they came and played Greenville, and they did did well for themselves. So I expect they'll keep fighting through. Johnson City, the Cardinals are Cardinals. They're down, they're down two, and, uh, well, they're Cardinals. Greenville's down four. Greenville Reds, which is kind of surprising. I would have expected them to be down further, considering how poorly they were playing coming out of the, uh, you know, coming out of the gate. Uh, I think that they've improved some when they calmed down and kind of got things figured out a little bit. Uh, and it will be interesting because this weekend, starting Friday, they're getting the Reds' number one prospect, India, who is just going to come straight to there rather than going to Billings, which is an interesting choice. And there was uh, another young man by the name of Sienna who's supposed to report there. Well, he may have already reported there. And so it looks like the Reds are going to put real talent into Greenville. And I am sure that the other, league, other teams are doing the same thing with their rookie league team. So uh, right about now is when things start getting interesting in these rookie leagues to see who's coming where, what talent's going to be where. And despite the fact that things seem settled now, and particularly in the East, things could really change in the near future as some just amazing talents go there uh, and the t their teams don't want to bring them up any higher because they're coming out of college or high school and they're not used to playing full seasons yet. So they start them out in the rookie league to see how they'll do. And that should be interesting. I am going to go watch Greenville play on Friday and I'm going to then follow them to Burlington for the next two days to see how well the Reds are and who they're playing, uh, if they're playing these new guys, and see if they bump some of the guys who've really been doing pretty decent, particularly Cash, uh, Cash Case 
and the uh, second or the shortstop who's been pretty good. And there should be some other outstanding standouts from other teams that are in the same situation. So keep an eye out for the Appalachian League if you're anywhere near to follow it. Yeah, they don't broadcast it over the internet like they do all the uh, these other MILB teams. Uh, you can listen to it on the radio, and baseball plays pretty well on the radio, so you can keep up with it there. But, or I should say, over the internet radio. Um, but I do recommend if you can go out and watch your local Appalachian League team; they are fun to watch. Having said all that. Uh, if you like what you saw here today, hit like. If you like what you see around here generally, well, hit subscribe. Uh, comments down below. I cannot promise I will write back all of them, but uh, I will try to read every, one, every single one of them. If you want to contact me directly, at LammersK on Twitter, direct message me. And finally, if you got a little bit of spare money and you got a little bit of spare time, go watch some minor league baseball. Y'all have a good week.